All right. Hello. We are here with Nathan Hirsch, CEO of FreeUp. And today we're going to talk about outsourcing to scale your FBA business. Nathan, how's it going? Dude, doing great. How are you? Pretty good, man. Very good. Um, cool. So why don't, we, why don't we just get started? Can you introduce yourself and free up, um, you know, just a little bit? Yeah, so I'm a, a longtime e-commerce seller. I started back in 2008 out of my college dorm room, and I started with textbooks. Uh, eventually, started doing trial and error, and came across the baby product industry. Um, you have to remember, this was 2008. No one really knew what Amazon was or what Amazon was going to become. It was kind of like this big bookstore that was just getting into other products. So mm. I got in at a great time. I started selling baby products. I I did over a million dollars in my first year or so, and. I, I really just struggled because I was doing everything. There was no Amazon software back then. I was responding to every customer service email. I was listing every product. I was changing every price. I was also drop shipping. So there's a lot of manual work and quality assurance work there. And I hired college kids, but I mean, from not being their top priority to having them smoke and eat or smoke and drink on the job, mm -hmm. um, that wasn't very reliable. And I, I tried hiring older people, but they didn't take me seriously. I was 20, 21. So I turned to the remote hiring world, the Upworks, the Fibers, and it, I was okay. I made some good hires, some people that are still with me today, but I always wanted a, a better, faster way. And, and that's when I had the idea to build my own platform, FreeUp, where we get thousands of applicants every week. We vet them for skill, attitude, communication, top 1% get onto our platform, and then we make them available to people quickly whenever they need them. So that, that's really the, the concept of it. And we added great 24 seven support on the back end in case people have even the smallest issue and a no turnover guarantee. If people quit for any reason, we cover replacement costs. So I tried to take everything I didn't like about those platforms and change them and keep everything that I liked. And we work with tons of, of Amazon sellers, Shopify sellers, marketing agencies, different online businesses. It's a lot of fun just helping people scale and grow. Awesome, man. Awesome. And, and, you know, as a, you know, a uh, uh, a solo entrepreneur or, you know, entrepreneur running an Amazon business of a small team, you know, chances are likely that, you know, as you said, you know, you're spending, you're spending a lot of time on low value activities or, you know, maybe not even low value activities, but activities that, you know, are not within your realm of expertise. And, you know, you can, you can outsource some of that, some of those low value activities to, you know, to virtual assistants and even, hire experts to, you know, to do some of the other stuff that isn't your expertise, but is, you know, high value. And, you know, that'll free up your time to, you know, focus on things that you're awesome at and, you know, things that will build the business and, you know, also just give you more time to enjoy the things you enjoy in life while, you know, your business is running. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to divide it into three levels of, of people you can hire. You got the followers, you got the doers, and you got the experts. And mm. everyone's in a different place in their business. Some people are stuck in the day-to-day -day operations like, like I was back in the day. Other people have projects that they want to just get off their plate, pro projects that they're not necessarily the best people to do. And then other people are taking on new tasks. They might be marketing on a new channel. They might be running Amazon PPC for the first time. And the followers, they're five to 10 bucks an hour, non-US. They have years of experience, especially if you get them on free up, but they're there to follow your systems, your processes. Mm -hmm. They're there to get you your hours back so you can focus on higher level stuff. The doers, they're specialists. They do the same thing eight to 10 hours a day. You're not teaching a graphic designer how to be a graphic designer, but they're not consulting with you either. They're there to mm -hmm. get those projects off your plate. And then the experts, the high level freelancers, consultants, agents, they have their own system, their own strategy. They can project manage. They can execute high-level game plans. You can spend the next six months learning how to do Amazon PPC, but as a business owner, you can't do that with every single part of your business. It's not a good use of your time. So you need to hire experts to come in and hit the ground running right from the beginning. So a big part of hiring is figuring out, hey, where do I need to insert those followers? Where do I need to insert those doers? And where do I need to get those experts? Mm -hmm. and, and free up allows businesses to hire at all three levels, correct? Yeah, we have people from five to 100 plus per hour, US, non-US, fixed price to over 100 skill sets, e-commerce, marketing, and more. And, and it really, I mean, we've got some clients who only use us for the followers or only use us for the experts and other people come in and, and it's a combination of both. You might hire an expert to create a strategy 
For example, I have a YouTube expert who runs my YouTube channel, but then I have some specialists. I have a uh, guy, I have two video editors. I have a, a content writer who writes the, the, the notes for that go underneath the, the videos. And then I also have a VA who keeps everything organized and, and does more of following my instructions. So they kind of work together, even though the expert's doing the strategy, I don't want the expert to do every little thing. So I'm paying top dollar for every little thing. They're going to focus on the high level stuff and I'm going to insert the mid and, and lower level people where I need. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the main thing stopping, you know, most, uh, most businesses from, you know, outsourcing and hiring to, you know, to do a lot of these stuff? these tasks? Yeah, I, mean, I think entrepreneurs, uh, they, they tend to try to do everything themselves. I mean, mm -hmm. back in the day when, when I was running this Amazon business, I met with an accountant for the first time and I, I had to start paying taxes. And, and the first question he asked me was, when are you going to hire your first person? Mm -hmm. And I kind of shrugged him off. Like, like, why would I do that? That's money out of my pocket. They're going to steal my ideas. They're going to hurt my business. I, I love this. I can do this 24 seven, seven days a week for forever. And he just laughed in my face and he said, you're going to learn this lesson on your own. And sure enough, my, my first busy season comes around. I get destroyed. I'm working 20 hours a day. I'm not sleeping. I lose all my hair and, and I get out to January eight weeks later of just working my butt off. And finally that, that light bulb goes off. Like I, I need to hire people. I've, I've hit that limit. Eventually, if you don't hire people, you just hit that ceiling. And I think entrepreneurs that they want to do everything. They, they have an issue trusting other people. They don't think that people can do it as good of a job as they can. But I can tell you right now, I mean, my team bills me 1200 hours a week. They do a lot of work every single week and they do a ton of stuff way better than I could ever do our, our billing. I'm not a accountant. I'm not a billing person. I couldn't do it as well as they can. So mm -hmm. you can surround yourself with people and, and change that narrative, but it does take some trial and error. No one has a 100% hiring record. It doesn't exist. But if you focus on what you can control and improving the interview process, improving setting your expectations, how you communicate, how you lead, how you manage, you can get into that 70, 85%, which is a game changer compared to that 10 to 30%. Mm. And I'd, I'd imagine that a lot of, you know, a lot of business owners are kind of operating on instinct or, you know, just like, they, they know their processes, you know, by what they do, but they don't have, you know, SOPs written out per se. And I'd imagine that that is kind of holding back a lot of people from, you know, actually writing down the SOPs to, you know, to be able to hand it over to someone. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I, I think everything's in your head, right? And if something happens to you, if you get sick, it's so tough to, to get that information out there. And, and I'm one of those people that for me to sit down for eight hours and write out all my standard operating procedures, that's painful. I, I don't know yeah, if I can do sure. that. <laughs> but what, what I like to do is I like to chip away at it, especially right. early in the morning when, when no one's bothering me, no one's calling me. And, and I'll just continue working on it little by little. I'll write a few paragraphs. I'll write a few lines, some bullet points. And if you're doing that every day, you're going to wake up in six months and have all that information out of your head on paper. And you can start experimenting with it. You can start putting people in place that'll not only execute those SOPs, but update them and make them better. If you're like me and, and you're a startup, those systems, those processes are constantly changing, constantly right. evolving. So you want, you want to put people in place that can keep them updated because the last thing you want to do is spend 10 hours writing SOP and in a year they're, they're totally outdated and you pretty much have to start over again. Right. So you got to get in that mentality of little by little and keeping them up to date and it's going to save you so much future time and effort. Yeah, I mean, it, I totally resonate with this. Like even a lot of the stuff that I do, and that we've recently, you know, hired some people that, you know, to, to take care of. I, I never thought anyone would be able to do it until I actually, you know, you know, took the time to write down the process and then, okay, now, like, now it's like, ah, you know, someone, someone could take this off of me. Right, exactly. And it's addicting. I mean, just like making bad hires makes you never want to hire anyone again, right? It's a, it's a huge hassle, time waster, money waster. But hiring A players, that's addicting. That makes you want to hire more people. It makes you want to pass more stuff off your plate. And, and, and to me, that, that's when entrepreneurship becomes fun, when you can start delegating and getting a lot done. And I have people that work overnight, and I wake up the next morning, and projects are done, ready to go. That's exciting. That's what motivates you to keep building and growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just your leverage is just so much uh, 
you just have so much more leverage in that regard. Exactly. Cool. Well, we have some, uh, some questions from some customers here. So let's see from Terrence Blackburn. He asks, what's the, what's the most effective way of monitoring a VA's work and workload? So I have 45 VAs. I don't believe in screen capture software. Mm. For me, I'm going to figure out relatively quick whether they're working and doing their job and getting stuff done or they're not. For me mm -hmm. to go through and watch 45 people's screens, I, I don't want to do that, first of all. And I also want to build a level of trust where I'm not looking over their shoulder. Now, mm. plenty of clients disagree with me. You're, if you use free up, you're welcome to use Time Doctor, Hubstaff, whatever you want to use. Um, but for me, you should be figuring out how can I get updates on projects? How can I set due dates? And, and do times and make sure stuff gets done. It could be as easy as, hey, when you're done working for the day, send me an email with a daily report on, on how everything goes or, or at the end of every week. Or if you make a new hire, shoot me a Skype message every hour with what you're working on and, and what questions you have. And coming up with creative ways like that, to me, keeps people more accountable. It's a little bit less micromanaging, less work on your end. You can always do that screen capture software, especially if you um, if you are someone that, <laughs> that doesn't trust someone to just do it on their own. Um, but for me, it's all about figuring out ways for them to report to you in different capacities as you go and continue to work with them. Awesome. And uh, how, how do you minimize risk from login info access? Yeah, so there's always going to be a risk, right? There, huh. There's nothing that me or you or, or anyone else can do. And yeah, hiring yeah. is just risky. I mean, even if you hire your best friend to sit right next to you, there's always a chance they do something stupid or, or jeopardize your business in some way. I mean, mm -hmm. With that said, we bill 18,000 hours a week on free up. We, we've never had a serious issue, mm -hmm. knock on wood. And I'm sure if we bill enough hours, eventually something will happen. But the risk is a lot smaller than people think. Yeah, Virtual yeah. assistants, freelancers, they care a lot more about providing for their family and growing their freelance business and keeping you as a client and staying on my platform than they do about jeopardizing your business. And I know we've all heard the Amazon rumors that Amazon shuts people down when two accounts are linked and people are in different places. I work with thousands of sellers. I've yet to see that actually happen. Mm. Amazon expects you to hire people. I wouldn't give people main access to your Amazon account, but we've got Amazon consultants that have clients inside, outside, free up, and they're logging into 20 Amazon accounts every single week through user permissions, and there's no issue whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point, your, your options are you run the business yourself or you hire people, and, and you're going to have to give people user permissions if you hire people. Yeah, yeah. Very fair. Um, cool. Question from Harry Watson. When outsourcing web development or des for design, web development slash design, does this mean you'll have to go back to the developer each time you need to update the pages? Yeah. So I would establish that up front. I mean, every mm -hmm. situation is different. If, if you're hiring someone for a WordPress site, then they should be able to code it in a way that an, a new WordPress person can pick it up where they left off. And mm -hmm. that's why I like to diversify a little bit and maybe have two or three web developers and I can go to. So if I need a quick update and, and one's busy, I can go to the other one. Mm -hmm. Now for the free up software, which is built in node for, for me to get a new developer to work on something small, there's a whole onboarding process there. It's a very complex custom code. So for me, I'm trying to, I have three developers and, and I want to give them consistent work and make sure that they're there for me at all times. So, it really just depends on the situation. It's also important that you get the original source files and that you get access to everything um, so that you have the login to, to get in the back of WordPress or if it's a graphic design, you have the original file. So if the first graphic designer is available, you can give it to someone else. You can make some quick edits, but you want to establish all of that up front mm -hmm. before you get started with the project. You don't want the project to wrap up and then three days later after you haven't talked to the dev for three days, be like, okay, I got I to gotta talk to this guy. I got to figure out where we establish all that from the beginning. Right. So make it clear like, yeah, if there's, if, you know, once we get the main project done, if changes need to be made down the road, you know, this is included. Yeah. It, what's included in the scope. I had a client yesterday um, and the freelancer was really nice and helped the client out. But the client a week after the project was like, hey, can you show me how to do X, Y, Z? And it wasn't a small thing. It was like a 30 minute consultation. Mm. And the freelancer said, yeah, but I, I, I should get paid for that time. And the client said, hey, I thought that was included in the scope. And mm. my question was, like, was it or was it not? There, there's no in between. It was either mm. in the scope or, or 
it wasn't in the scope and it wasn't and we came to an agreement and I think I split the cost of an hour it was like ten dollars so it wasn't that big of a deal but I, I told the client I was like this wasn't a big deal but in the future when you're right. working with developers or any type of freelancer you got to establish what's in the scope and what's not and you can't make any assumptions because I, I mean who knows if that was outside free up maybe the developer had started a new full-time project that next day and, and they just weren't available afterwards. you got to establish that up front. Yeah, I guess that's, you know, being clear with things up front is, is important for any, you know, relationship that's going to, you know, last a good amount of time. So then when things like that do come up, you've already made it clear what the protocol is. Exactly. All right. Let's see here. Is it, is it common to acquire an SEO specialist who also creates the content and publishes it to your website? It, every freelancer is different. And this is kind uh -huh. of a, a more of a life thing than a free up thing. If you get someone who can do a lot of different things very well, they tend to cost more than someone or than just dividing it up among different people. I tend to divide it up among different people. I like to diversify a little bit. I've learned some hard lessons back in the day when I didn't diversify and I had all my eggs in one basket and that person wasn't available and nothing got done. So I like to split it up a little bit and it ends up saving you a little bit more money. The downside is you end up managing a little bit more people. So there, there's pros and cons. There's no right or wrong way, but I would really establish with that person what they're going to be responsible for and what are they actually good at. Some people are really good at one thing and they know how to do two or three other things but that's not really what they're the best at. So mm -hmm. it depends on the person and you want to establish that up front. Cool. And I mean, you know, the, the range of skills, skill sets available on free up, you know, I mean, copywriting, keyword research, PPC design, you know, development really, I mean, the list goes on, huh? Yeah, I mean, if you go to freeup.com slash skills or freeup.com slash pricing or freeup.com slash menu, which is a new thing we created that has sample requests that you can put into our platform. I mean, there, there's so much you can do with remote talent. It, it gives you so much flexibility as an entrepreneur and there's stuff that you need to do to get out of the day to day. There's stuff that you should do to promote your business. And then there's stuff that you can experiment with. I mean, I do that all the time. I, I just started making Instagram stories that are one minute clips of this podcast, which is another experiment from six months ago. And, and who knows what the ROI is going to be. It doesn't cost that much money. But for me, I like trying lots of new things, mm -hmm. low risk, high reward situations. And you never know what you're going to figure out about your business, what little hack, what little trick, what new way that you'll resonate with your audience, with your customers. And for me, that's part of the fun of, being able to hire freelancers that you're not committing, committing full time. You don't have an office. You're not hiring them for three years necessarily. You can always give them more hours, but you can hire people for one-time projects or for two hours a week or one hour a day or, or whatever it is just to try out new things. Mm, awesome. And then another question here, what are, what are some tips on how to acquire these individuals and what to look for, for long-term business? Um, so I think, you know, tips on, you know, acquiring a good fit and, uh, you know, for maintaining relationships for the long term. Yeah. I mean, where to get them, you can go to freeup.com with three E's. My calendar's at the top. My team's calendar's at the top. You can create a free account and, and mention this video to get a $25 credit to try us out. And it's as simple as putting in a request. We'll send you one person by default. If you want to meet three or five or whatever that number is, just tell us and we'll send you more options. And in that request, you can put, hey, I'm looking for someone long-term and we're only going to introduce you to someone that is interested in that. Now, mm -hmm. there's also some element that's on the client side. I mean, you want to treat people well. You want to learn what motivates them. What motivates people is different. Some people care about money. Some people care about status. Some people mm -hmm. care about believing about the, the, the company. Some people care about security for the, their family or something that's, that's more stable so they can work from home. Everyone's different. You should figure that out when you when you want to ask questions and build a relationship that's a little bit more than work long term. I, I, if you see this bobblehead of me behind me, that was a gift from one of my virtual assistants that lives in the Philippines. We've been working together for nine years. I'm the godfather of one of her kids. We wow. have a great long term relationship. She's not going anywhere. And, yeah, and that's yeah. because I, when we first started, I wasn't just like work, 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 like mm -hmm. demanding, talking down to her. I built an actual relationship with her as a human being we continue to work together over time and that's really the key so you kind of you know align your values together 
not just over over work. It's all about treating people well, man. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right, we got one more question here, and yeah, I mean, before before we get into this last question, we you know at Landing Cube we've used free up primarily for the graphic design stuff, um, you know, for graphic designers, and we work with you know several graphic designers, but you guys make it so easy, you know, we just submit a uh, a request and then boom, we get, you know, we get some, uh, you know, some recommendations and it's really good. Appreciate it, man. I mean, we're always looking for feedback. We're a startup. We're, we're always trying to improve and, and we want to make this a, a great platform, not just for clients, but for freelancers too. We know these freelancers, they can go anywhere to offer services. We know that a lot of the other platforms have kind of pivoted in the way to caring way more about the client than about the freelancer. And we want to make it a platform where everyone's happy where it's efficient where we value everyone's time at the highest level and and we help people build mutually beneficial worker relationships together and that's what it's all about awesome all right so from elaine west what is the cost involved and can you guys help with other platforms as well or strictly amazon we can definitely help with with other platforms we've got thousands of businesses, everything from a, a sushi restaurant that's right down the street that's actually a client of mine to, um, to real estate agents, to software companies, to Shopify, Walmart, eBay, Amazon, to marketing agencies, influencers, all different types of stuff. Um, and and it, it's free to sign up. There's no monthly fee. There's no minimums. It's in our best interest to get you people you actually like that you actually help your business grow. Um, from our side, we take 15% with the $2 minimum per hour, 15% on fixed prices. The freelancers set their own rates and, and you can negotiate, you can agree to fixed price. We only talk to you in final rates. So mm -hmm. if we introduce Bob and Bob is seven bucks an hour, you pay seven bucks an hour, nothing else. If you want to offer six, we'll present six to Bob and, and it's up to Bob if he wants to accept, reject or counter. So you're mm -hmm. really in full control. Awesome. So guys, you, uh, you know, you hear what free ups all about. And, uh, as Nathan said, you can get, you said $25 off for mentioning this video. Yeah. $25 credit. You can use that on five hours of a $5 an hour VA. You can put that towards an expert. You can use it however you want. Awesome. Well, yeah, guys, I mean, if you, if you haven't started hiring and, you know, outsourcing some of your work to free up your time and, uh, you know, start build a more scalable business now, now is a better time than ever. So, uh, thanks so much, Nathan. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I look forward to continuing to working with you. Awesome.